in the first video on Social Security, I keep talking about how the tax that you pay for Social Security is called the FICA tax. What I want to do in this video is, one, let you know what FICA actually stands for, and then think a little bit about how it is actually calculated. So first, what does it stand for? Literally, it just stands for Federal Insurance, Federal Insurance Contributions, Contributions Act. That's the acronym. And so it'd be FICA, and then some people will call it FICA tax. FICA tax. And this isn't just to support Social Security, or to be technically correct, to support the old age survivors and disability insurance. It's also part of FICA tax is for that, and part is for Medicare. And so to make it things clear, so it's the part that is for Social Security, or what we associate as Social Security, which is really the OASDI. Did I get that right? OA OASDI. So part of it is for Social Security. And then that part is 12.4%, 12.4% of the gross salary. But half of this is paid for by the employer, half is paid by the employee. And we'll do a calculation in a second. So 6.2% and 6.2%. The part that's paid by the employer, that's, the, that's part of the payroll tax, stuff that the employer pays above and beyond the gross income that they're giving to the employee. And we'll do that calculation in a second. The other thing that FICA tax is used for is Medicare. Medicare. And this is for a total amount of 2.9% of, of an employee's gross salary or 1.45% from the employer as part of the payroll tax, and 1.45% from the employee. And if you add these two things up, you get 15.3% total FICA tax. 15.3%, where once again, half is paid by the employer and half is paid by the employee. Now let's just do a calculation so that it makes a little bit more tangible sense of what I'm even talking about with this FICA tax. So let's imagine that you make $100,000 a year. And it's a nice number because it makes the math easy. And then your employer, your employer, employer, employee. Let me write it like this. Employer, employee. So for Social Security, for Social Security, your employer will contribute 6.2% of this. So above and beyond paying the 100,000 gross salary, they will also pay 6.2% or $6,200 or $6,200, and the employee will also pay $6,200. And that will be deduct de deducted from their paycheck, so that what they get will be net of the $6,200. And then for Medicare, let me do that in pink. Then for Medicare, the employer will contribute $1,450, once again, above and beyond the gross salary of $100,000. And the employee will pay. 1450 out of their gross salary. So the total amount that is paid by the employer, total amount paid by the employer is $7,650 in payroll tax for this one employee, and the total amount by the employee is the exact same amount. 7650 So just to be clear, if you wanted to hire an employee and pay them $100,000 in gross salary, you actually would have to ha set aside $100,000 and the $7,650. So the employer, the total that the employer is paying, so employer, the total that they're paying, total paying, or the, let me just think of it this way. The total that the uh, employer has to set aside, total employer, if you include the salary, is going to be $100,000. $107,650. So they can cover the gross salary plus this payroll tax over here. The net that the employee is getting, the net that the employee is getting, and once actually this isn't even the net. This is I shouldn't even call it the net. This is the employee's getting after paying FICA taxes is going to be the hundred thousand minus the six seven thousand six hundred fifty. But I won't even write that number down. I mean, what is that? That's ninety. That's ninety uh, uh, ninety two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars because that's before paying just the traditional federal income tax and the traditional state income taxes. So that's going to cut it down a good bit. So the employee is going to take home probably on the order of sixty to seventy thousand dollars. So above and beyond this thing right here. So even though the employer is paying this much, the employee is getting a lot less in terms, of, in terms of what they get to take home. Now one thing that I think it is worth mentioning is unlike 
traditional federal income tax. And traditional federal income tax, your first, the first several tens of thousand dollars you make are not taxed. And then as you go up the brackets, each incremental dollar, as you enter one bracket or another, you start to pay a higher percentage on those. The FICA tax is actually very different. Some people would even call it a regressive income tax. And that's because you only pay the FICA tax on the first 106,000, or at least this is the numbers in 2011. You only pay it on the first $106,800. So someone who makes $200,000 will pay the same FICA tax as someone who, pay, who makes $106,800. So you only pay it on the percentage below that. And the reason why is that the person making the $200,000 will, will get the exact same benefits as well as the person who pays $106,800. And this number, essentially, they try to index it roughly to inflation, so it will go up over time. But to some degree, someone who someone who makes, let's say, well, someone who makes below this threshold is going to pay this percentage, is going to, between them and their employers, they're going to pay this percentage of their income. Well, someone who makes much more than this will actually pay a, a smaller percentage of their income, but they'll end up getting the same benefits. And so that's one reason why it's considered regressive, is that as you make more money, you're actually paying a smaller percentage of your income on FICA tax. And the other reason why it's considered regressive is actually on the benefit side. Because obviously, someone who, if you have two people receiving Social Security benefits, so you have this person, so this is when they turn 65. Let, let me put it this way. So let's say that you you have two people, they work their whole lives, or they and they let's say they both retire at 65, although that retirement rage is increasing. It's, it's slowly being indexed up. And then they retire. It's known that the wealthier people, or, or wealthier, and there's also demographics based on race and things like that, but it's known that wealthier people actually live longer, so they actually get benefits for a longer period of time. So they're actually able to get, they're actually able to get their benefits for longer. So depends where you fall into it. Likely that even though there's this cap, someone higher up the income chain also probably did pay more into it. But they are also getting a bigger check for paying more into it. The check that you eventually get is based to some degree on what level of FICA tax you were paying. And they're, they're very well likely to be able to collect these payments for longer than someone who maybe doesn't have the quite the same, uh, uh, I guess, quality of, 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 of life and, and doesn't act, actually live as long.